Hi everyone, Josh Silverman of Constantly Calibrating here at Phoenix Comic Con with Jeff Notkin of uh, Meteorite Men and STEM Journal. So we are talking about, yeah, let's, let's show that, Department of Strange Finds. Yes so we are. Tell me about the Department I'd of Strange delighted. Finds. I'd be delighted. Josh, I've been doing adventure television for a long time and we did three years of Meteorite Men, we did two years of STEM Journals and Meteorite Men in particular, very popular show, it's aired all over the world and I love the search for things. Yes. And so we thought, well, what if we had a show that had that level of adventure and humor, but that we opened it up into a much wider range of topics? And hence, Department of Strange Finds was born. So it has a lot of different ideas in it. The first is, yes, we're searching for unusual things, but I want concrete results. I want to find stuff. I want to find treasure or lost World War II aircraft. We might do a meteorite episode. We might do military relics. There's, there are a lot of possibilities. But the thing that really intrigues me about Strange Finds is it is a fan-based show. Sure. We have a very warm and interactive relationship with our fans from Meteorite Men and the other shows. And I thought, what would it be like if we could take that a step further and bring the fans much more into the fold? Okay. In other words... Do you have a great idea for an episode or a gadget or a gizmo or a story that's always fascinated you or a legend that you want to get to the bottom of? I want you to sell me on this idea of yours. And if it's good enough, we will go to the fans city. We'll make his or her episode. They'll be the star of the show. Okay. So rather than just doing something that we think our fans would like or hope that they will like, we're actually going to do the show that you would like to see yourself. So instead of doing that show where like some, some shows will do the thing where they'll look on their form and be like, oh, that's an interesting idea and you just kind of like, you know, throw it in an episode. You're actually crowdsourcing uh, all your ideas for exactly. what your, your topics. You're going to go to their town. I like that because I, I went, um, when I was talking earlier, uh, I didn't realize you were actually like going to involve the fan who submitted the thing as well. I, I knew about the submission process. That's cool. You're actually going to involve them as well. It, big time. And to the extent that we held a contest to name the show, and our main thing here at Phoenix Comic Con has been to set up a green screen and an entire camera and lighting setup. And we've been auditioning people, cosplayers, the curious, some yeah. Meteorite Men fans. We yeah, said, we have hey, the green yeah, screen yeah, back here, here. So we've had people nonstop throughout the convention yeah. coming in, doing some bits. We have a teleprompter set up with some ideas for them to read if they don't okay. have their own. So this is our first step. We thought we want to do a show that's fan-fueled, not, not just fan-based, fueled by the fans, let's get them involved from the beginning. Help us with the name, help us with the direction, come and show us your stuff, and I'm sure that some of the people that we auditioned mm -hmm. at this year's Comic-Con will end up being involved in the show in some way. That's, gr that's great to hear, and I, again, it's one of those things that's really cool, the, uh, the involvement, the degree of involvement you're doing with the fan community, and you're set up here in the Hall of Heroes of Phoenix Comic-Con, so you've got a nice advantage of people, because the reason I discovered you guys is I was just wandering aimlessly I think <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine who does uh, TK22 she was up there in her stormtrooper outfit you know and she was going there I'm like oh what's she doing over there and that's it, it, it draws people in because they see the cosplay they see the thing it's 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 good attention definitely it's a thing. so what's been the experience like I think it's common you said you've auditioned a few people what have been some of the highlights of that process? more than a few it's okay, it, numerous, especially exceptional numerous. Friday and Saturday, it was it was nonstop. We had so many people here. So on one hand, you've got the curious who come along and they go, oh, what's this about? Mm, television, uh, sign a waiver. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But most people go, oh, wow, a mm -hmm. new show idea. Let's do that. And look at cosplayers. We love them. They spend so much time working on outfits, creating costumes, either of their own design or based on characters that they love. And why do they do it? Because they want to share mm -hmm. their love of these characters. Well, they share their fandom. fandom. Yes. Yeah, they share the fandom. And the best part also is the people who are in that character. They're in that personality. And then you have them, you get them on, on the screen there. And then, let's say they're good. They come out and they'll be hosting your segments, right? I mean, they'll be, they'll, their thing will appear and there'll be a segment host. That, that is Essential. exactly the idea. Okay. So. It, nuts and bolts we got a lot of people to read things like check out the next episode of Department of Strange Finds just so we have snippets that we can use that we yeah. can cut into the show but more specifically there's some people who really stood out and we thought oh let's try and figure out to do a bit with them sure. and we had numerous people come to our booth and hear about what we were doing and say well I'm a paleontologist I'm a historian I've got a story about this I've always wondered about this lost treasure thing so if you set up a booth 
at Comic Con <laughs> with a camera and a green screen and lights and posters and goodies, people are going to come to see. Oh, what well, you're absolutely. Doing. I mean, it's just some people who don't even have interest in the show. Let's be fair. There, they want to be on a green screen and just talk, and then that and that alone will bring them in. But hey, maybe they have a secret talent for it that they didn't even know. They and had. we really have met some talented people. And sometimes it's people who are a little bit shy mm-hmm. and they're not quite sure they want to do it. Mm-hmm. And then you put them there and you give them the lines and they go boom. And suddenly, and like the appears. flower blossoms, almost. Exactly. You have to use a metaphor. So, okay, Strange Finds, fans are, crowdsourcing, you're crowdsourcing to fans for the ideas, but is there anything, like, you're hoping you guys get to do? Any specific Oh, my avenues? gosh, yes. Oh, now, don't think I don't have ideas. Sure. Because I've been doing adventure television for a long time. Oh, yeah. And over the years of doing Meteorite Men and STEM Journals and other shows, I have developed an episode list of okay. things that I really wanted to do. And many times these were shot down because they were too dangerous or they were too expensive or too crazy or just don't let Jeff do that. So <laughs> no, I've, no, I've, please I've, Exactly. <laughs> so now imagine the terror. I'm in charge. <laughs> so I mean, no, I'm not in charge. I'm, I'm one of five partners. But, but sure. I've saved all these episode ideas and some of them are killers that I've been wanting to do for years. And most are adventure and science related. Some are history related. Some to do with treasure. A couple to do with outer space. Some of them are, I've dreamed of these adventures for years. So I am super excited, not just to be doing a new show again, but to be doing the show that I always really wanted to do. And with the best people I could get, I made a short list of professionals I've worked with in the past on other shows who I consider to be among the best people working in television today. And that's my team. And okay, so I, and also that's what I love about what you guys are doing here because it's the passion. You speak with great passion about Thank this, you. and that's an aspect that we love at Constantly Calibrating. One of the things we pride ourselves on: we're small media, and there's let's be blunt here. There's a lot of small media out there. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, a hell of a lot of us. So how do we stand out? Passion for our work, passion for what we do. So we like to talk to people who are passionate. I, I keep using that word, but it's a big word for us. It's an important word for us. So I like seeing that you've been storing up these ideas. You've been storing up these things, and you. you bringing fans in as well who have their ideas and it's just, it just seems like it's you've got the right recipe for something that could be really interesting thank you can really bring, bring uh, good attention again it's also broader based so you're not just dealing with one little section of science exactly somebody doesn't like let's just say they really just don't like uh, history specifically like, or this era of history or something like that well they'll come back for the more science related things or the more like things that delves into the science fiction kind of side of things later on exactly so you well, can have people who are just interested come in later wide appeal is important and also I said this at the beginning I want concrete results I've watched the ghost shows I've watched the UFO shows on Meteorite Men we found stuff we delivered the goods we went out out on hair raising adventures more often than not we brought meteorites home that's what I want in the show I want real things I want to investigate some famous legends and not at the end go well you know it looks like the Holy Grail may have been here in the past but no longer today that's just so much nonsense it was just generalized BS yes exactly if people wanted I was trying to use good language, but why bother? Well, we don't. <laughs> okay. We don't here, no. Nah. I try and I try and it's... Shh, nah. All right, so there's going to be no BS in this show yeah. and no scripting. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of reality television. Meteor 8 Men was not a reality show. It was an adventure science show. The show is not scripted. I love that distinction because there's a major difference and people use the, the wrong terms sometimes. I like the idea, again, you're going to go out and do this. You're going to get results and it'll be entertaining television. It'll be entertaining things. So... Where can people find us? We invite anyone who's interested to go to departmentofstrangefinds.com where we have more information. And we'll be putting our little teaser, which is airing behind us actually, Josh, at the moment, up online within the next few days. You can learn more by going to my YouTube channel, Jeff Notkin. It's G-E-O-F-F-N-O-T-K-I-N. Or follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's the same handle for all of them. G-E-O-F-F-N-O-T-K-I-N. And I do my own Twitter, and I'm very friendly, so you should say hello. That's awesome. Well, okay, Jeff, thank you for joining us uh, for this interview. And again, you know, check out Depart- check out Department of Strange Finds. Sounds like a really interesting thing. But as far as I'm concerned, Josh Silverman, Constant Calibrating, ConstantCalibrating.com. Uh, you're watching this probably on youtube.com slash concalpod. Make sure to check us out in all fun, assorted places. With that, I bid you a good sign-off.